Welcome to Students Incorporated, a podcast where we dive into relevant topics and issues related to the world of business, technology, education, and design. I'm your host, Mr. Jason. Episodes include student conversations, interviews with thought leaders, and inspirational stories with an international flavor. This podcast is created and produced with the help of students from the International Community School of Bangkok. episode, we will be discussing the importance of life skills training for young people. I'm joined by our special guest, Miss Mary Kate, a life skills teacher at ICS for part one. Then part two includes a pre-recorded interview with Mike and Michelle Beard of Imago Work from Hanoi, Vietnam. But before we jump into part one of our episode, let's hear our quote of the day and get some headline news. Audre Lorde said, it is not our differences that divide us. It is our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences. Lord was an esteemed poet, novelist, and professor of English at John Jay College of Criminal Justice and Hunter College. As an African-American poet, she discussed topics such as race and gender. Her first volume of poetry, First Cities, was published in 1968. She was also an essayist, and in her nonfiction work titled The Cancer Journals, she discussed her own struggles of cancer. Although she passed away in 1992, she is remembered for her powerful poetry and and literary works. Disney is planning to fire around 7,000 employees from its worldwide staff. Disney Plus is also losing monthly subscribers as they've only added 200,000 subscribers in the US and Canada, bringing its toll to 46.6 million subscribers. They plan to reorganize the work structure to reduce cost and be more coordinated. In East Palestine, Ohio, a 50-car train derailed. This caused a huge fire and released tons of dangerous chemicals. Residents were told to evacuate. There is no information about what caused the accident. Plenty of the cars contain hazardous materials, such as flammables and combustibles. 14 cars contained chemicals and were exposed to fire. However, at this point, the evacuation order has been lifted. The Super Bowl drew in 113 million people. Rihanna's show itself had over 118 million watchers, 15% more than 2022 halftime show. It was a huge success coming in as the third most watched Super Bowl ever. Each 30 second commercial cost 7 million and 51 spots were sold. FC alone dished out $14 million for two 30 second spots, not including production. They hired actors Steve Martin and Ben Stiller. Thank you for the quote and the headline news. And we are here for part one to discuss life skills for all. And I'm joined by Pukau, who will be staying in as co-host one. All right, Pukau, can you start us off with our first question? Yes, sir. So, Miss Mary Kate, can you please introduce yourself and describe your role at the school? Sure. So, I am Miss Mary Kate, and I teach elementary life skills. So any students K through fifth grade uh, in the life skills program. Next question is, why is a life skills program so significant, not only for the students participating, but also for the surrounding community? Great question. Um, I would say for the students participating, it's important because it gives them an opportunity to be in an inclusive environment, which they may not get outside of school. Um, It creates opportunities for them to learn, develop relationships with peers. But for the surrounding community, it is beneficial and significant because it creates more awareness. I would say, I know some students in the elementary, they just aren't aware of disabilities or individuals with disabilities until they're in class with somebody with a disability. And then that creates really awesome conversation about what is a disability? What is this specific disability and how can we be friends? How can we relate to them? Um, Learning that they have a lot of things in common with one another. Um, So that's been really cool to see as are some of my students join their homeroom classes and develop these friendships and seeing the way that their community in their homeroom class learns to love them and learns to relate to them. And they have this opportunity that they might not have elsewhere. How do you think the school best accommodates students in the life skills program? I think ICS does a great job of allowing students the opportunity to be included in the gen ed 
program. So for elementary, that's joining a homeroom and going to specials with their homeroom. In middle and high school, it's going to electives. Beyond that, it's joining academic classes as well. So some elementary students are joining for reading and social studies and science and Bible. They're going to chapel and just joining their homeroom for as much of the day as possible, which I know there are other programs where it's more of a self-contained classroom. So the life skills students or special ed program is they're just in their classroom all day with their peers who um, have disabilities. I think ICS does a great job of allowing them to be encouraging and allowing them to be in their homeroom or in the gen ed classroom as much as possible throughout the day. So that's helping with the socialization and then regular other classes and all that kind of stuff. Totally. Yeah, helping with socialization, social skills for sure. And yeah, just allowing other students to see that students with disabilities are able and capable of participating in a lot more than they might assume. I have one student recently, he made a comment of like, why isn't so-and-so in our class more? Like, he's smart. He should be up here more. And it was because he had seen him do a certain math problem and he he recognized that the student was able and capable. Um, and so that comments like that are encouraging. I, I read recently too that researchers, this was a study I'd read about, researchers tracked nearly 24,000 adolescents who qualified for special education, and they discovered that spending a majority of the day, at least 80% in the general ed class, improved reading scores and math scores by like tremendously um, compared to the scores of those who were more in self-contained classrooms and isolated from their peers. That alone just, it not only increases their, their social skills, but it also allows them to grow academically as well. And the data is there to prove it, right? Right. Um, this is a little bit, I, I know you don't have this question, but describe maybe what your average day looks like. Sure. In the elementary, I know it's somewhat similar for middle and high school, but for me, it's kind of running all over the place throughout the day. Um, I have three students in the elementary and they all start their day in their homeroom classes. So that's between two different homerooms, a fourth grade and a fifth grade homeroom. So between my TA and I, we're up there supporting them in their homeroom. And then throughout the day, they're, they're either, one will stay up there for Bible and some specials and stuff like that. Another will come down and do math and reading with me. Um, but throughout the day, it's kind of back and forth between homeroom, going to specials, um, and then working individually with me. And when they're down in my classroom, it's working on math, reading, and writing. Okay, the next question then is, how have you seen the program develop? This is only my second year here at ICS. So I was able to have a conversation with Miss Nan and Miss Julia, who have been here a little bit longer. Um, and they shared that the program started at with nothing. There was no program. And then it started as two students in middle school and then as those students moved up, they added in the high school program, and then eventually the elementary program was added. Started from nothing and now to an elementary, middle, and high school program. It's continued to develop to just being able to meet more of students' needs, having more staff to support their needs, right? And the other side of it is the community developing in awareness and inclusion and just openness to having students with disabilities in their classroom. Initially, I know in the elementary at least, it started out as just students going to specials. And now students are up in homerooms for Bible, for uh, reading sometimes, science and social studies. So that's a huge um, development. I would say also something that Miss Nan and Miss Julia pointed out was that teachers in the secondary are welcoming the life skills students into their class, um, where I think initially maybe it felt strange or it felt a little awkward to have life skills students um, in their class and they weren't necessarily sure how to teach them, how to accommodate them. So it's been really cool to see in across all levels, the homeroom teachers and uh, secondary teachers just welcoming life skills students into their room. Can you tell us more about the new Life Skills Teachers Assistant Program and how local students can sign up for it? The Life Skills TA program, uh, we're starting to call Links Program. Um, so you can apply to be a link, and that'll be when you register for classes That's for high school students. Um, so when you apply to uh, for or register for classes, um, you can specify TA for the Life Skills class. And once you do that, you'll get a application. And once you apply, uh, two teachers um, will get two teacher recommendation forms. What benefits would the students gain from joining the TA program? 
I think just growing in openness and awareness of individuals who are different than you. I think that's a life skill for all people is learning how to relate and work with people who are different than you. And so um, I think that's a huge skill that all students benefit. Growing in awareness, openness, empathy as you learn how to interact and relate to individuals who are different than you. I think something that was really cool to see is after the first semester, we had three links and they all commented on how just going to that block was a highlight of their day, of how much joy that the life skills students brought to their day. So I think that is another thing that you gain is just a really fun opportunity to relate to people, um, to get to know and build relationships, but also the joy that they provide you in your day. Okay, well, we're on to our last question. And if someone wants to pursue a career in special education, how should they go about doing so? And do you have any advice for them? I would say for ICS students, uh, if you are thinking about pursuing a career in special ed, becoming a LINK or a life skills TA would be a great opportunity to see if that's something that you're really passionate about. Um, it gives you a great opportunity to be in the classroom or go to different classes with the life skills students. I think also finding opportunities to volunteer and work with individuals with disabilities outside of school if that's something you're thinking about, just to get that experience. And then going forward in university, finding a school or a university that has a program for special education. Yeah, advice for students who are looking to pursue special education, but also just advice for individuals in general, I would say is the idea of presuming intelligence, not looking at individuals with disabilities and assuming that they're not able or not capable. I think that's oftentimes when we, yeah, we're proved wrong the most is when we think like, oh, they are going to need extra support in this or they're going to just because they can't communicate what they're thinking or can't communicate what they need right now, uh, they must not be smart. And so I think that would be the biggest piece of advice for anybody pursuing special ed or life skills or just in general is viewing each individual, whether they have a disability or not, as able and capable because oftentimes they're a lot smarter than we often assume. So yeah, having that mindset going into working with life skills students here at ICS, but also just in general. Okay, and with that, we'll be right back with the short PSA. But if you're interested in links and you're here at ICS, check it out. It's a great new program. Speaking of diversity, International Day is right around the corner. This is the day that ICS celebrates its very own diversity. ICS has over 22 countries represented in its student body. There will be amazing food, music, and games at the after-school event, along with a show featuring dances and acts representing the countries. Represent your country by wearing traditional clothes during the school day on February 24th. We are back for part two of our episode that's focused on the topic of life skills. Life skills also include vocational training. Previously, I was able to sit down with my business partner and his wife to discuss a social enterprise they started in Hanoi, Vietnam. The following conversation was recorded on one of my trips to visit them. All right, could you introduce yourselves and then explain the vision behind Imago Work? Sure, my name is Mike and I'm here with my wife, Michelle. We've been in Hanoi for 12 years and I've been friends with Jason for a long time. Uh, and I'm also Jason's business partner in Vietnam. We uh, started Simple Coffee here a few years ago uh, and that was a few years after Jason started in Bangkok. Imago Work is a vocational training program uh, for young adults that are 16 and above that have cognitive disabilities. Yeah, the vision for this really kind of comes from our own personal experience of having uh, a son who has special needs. Our son Evan, he's 26 this year and he has Down syndrome. And when uh, Mike and Jason and Julie opened up Simple Coffee in Vietnam, we invited our son Evan, who uh, had had an opportunity to study vocational training in the U.S. We invited him to come back and work with us in this coffee shop. And we just saw how much life it brought to him and just kind of this sense of purpose, sense of dignity. And we thought, you know what, we would love to do this for more young people, not just Evan. And so we, uh, as we've been meeting families living here in Vietnam, um, that are similar to ours, we started to, yeah, just catch this vision for how we could help other young people like Evan go to work. 
I really like the meaning and vision behind Imago work. Maybe you can give a little information about how you came up with the word Imago. Imago work actually comes from the phrase Imago Dei. So uh, that's a, a Latin phrase that means image of God. And so it comes from our own uh, faith background, which is this uh, which is the sense that all humans are uh, created in the image of the creator, that they're brought into this world with special gifts and talents and abilities, and they are meant to use those gifts to um, contribute to our world and to make our world a better place. And so we need these gifts. We need these um, young people to be using their gifts. And so when you go to work, that's one way that you show that image. And so it's just this way that we can really um, instill dignity in uh, young people who often are kind of on the margins, often are not welcomed or included and, and don't have a lot of opportunities for work. And so we thought, well, this is a great, a great name for the program. Yeah. And I'll go work. I really like that. Um, I'm sure some of our listeners would love to hear about some of the workplace initiatives you've been promoting through this program. So maybe you can explain some of those initiatives are, some of your partnerships with partner businesses, as well as some of the training as well. Yeah. So actually, um, the inspiration for Imago Work and the idea first comes from Thailand. Actually, we met uh, Max Simpson, who is who runs Steps with Tira in Bangkok. So that's where we first saw this model of training in a vocational training center for one to two years and then partnering with local businesses within our city to create uh, jobs within these businesses. So we are in our third year of um, operation in Hanoi, and we currently have about five different partner businesses in the city. So we work with uh, places like Intercontinental Hotel, uh, of course, Simple Coffee, other coffee shops like Joma Bakery and Orberry Coffee. Uh, we're just now beginning some partnerships with international schools, such as the United Nations International School. And so what we do is we, we go to these companies and we just share with them this vision and we say, hey, you know, we have some great young people who are looking for work. Would you consider opening up some jobs for them? And so they get creative and look for different types of, of jobs that would be suitable for uh, for students like our students. Uh, so what kind of training do you actually do within the program? I know there's different like elements or different segments and there's specific things you train them for in the workplace. So maybe you can explain some of that too. Yeah, so there's uh, we we train in three basic areas. Uh, a lot of our students are uh, trying to develop skills uh, that will help them with sort of their basic life and uh, and just living skills. And so we we provide training with uh, basic life skills, uh, and then we provide training with social skills. Uh, some of our students struggle in the area of communication and connecting with other people, uh, and so we provide some training in that area. And then the third area would be vocational skills. So these would be practical job skills. And we are just identify the skills that you need in the workplace. And we break those skills down into individual steps and uh, basically help our students learn how to like make a, make a cup of coffee or clean a window or uh, serve a customer. Uh, but we think about these things uh, and then we think about what are all the individual pieces that go into uh, making a cup of coffee and then breaking it down into those individual steps. I know there are challenges, obviously, in uh, working in business and hiring and also training. But within your program, maybe you can explain or tell us what are some of the challenges you face with this type of work and specifically about when you get uh, some of your trainees ready and then release them into certain businesses uh what you know what does that kind of look like yeah there's a few different challenges i think for us uh, like i was talking about with the training is making sure that we're we're providing training that is individualized to the needs of our students and so uh that can be a challenge because some of the students um might have challenges in one area where other students have challenges in another area and trying to create uh, a training program that that accommodates for all of the different individual needs um, at times can be challenging it's it's not impossible obviously but it's it's something that we constantly are are revising and then i think probably but bigger than that the biggest challenge that we face is uh, is just uh, the attitudes in in society uh, when we're approaching people about this they 
Uh, they tend to think of it first in terms of charity. How can we help people um, with with these cognitive differences? Um, and we try to approach it in a way where we're encouraging people that it's not about just helping them, but it's also about allowing these young adults to access their gifts and their talents and be able to uh, bring those gifts and talents into the workplace because they do have a lot to bring to the workplace. And so part of the challenge is, is showing uh, businesses uh, what those benefits are and how they can benefit from these students being, being in their workplace. And my next question is, how have your participants responded to the training? It seems like there's been a great positive response, but um, maybe you can speak specifically about some of the individuals that you've been working with and some of the growth that you've seen in them? What they love is just this idea that they are going into training and they're being trained to go to work. And for many of them, you know, they just haven't had that experience before. And so it's already just exciting. It's exciting to come in and be able to learn how to operate an espresso machine, learn how to froth milk. And these are things that they often see in a coffee shop, but then uh, for them to get to try it and step by step become more confident, it's very exciting. Uh, our, one of our first trainees, his name is Zui, and he has Down syndrome, just like our son Evan. I remember them showing up at Imago one day and his dad saying, you know, we have a vision for our son to be able to go to work. And so it was neat to see as we come from knowing not a single thing about how to pull a shot or how to frog milk and then over the time of him being in our program be able to make all the different kind of coffee drinks that you can make in a coffee shop and then what's very exciting is that now he um, is in a, a really great internship at intercontinental hotel where he works he gets to work in the uh, bakery and he is um part of that team. He goes every day and um, works on uh, doing uh, different things with packaging their cakes and their pastries. Probably the best part of it, though, is because, you know, as we started there, they didn't really know him. And I think the staff there were also like not sure how they were going to work with him. But now that he's been there over a year, he's part of their team. And so they're excited to have him and they love him. And so I think that's that's what we want to see. You know, it's not just us training them and then getting them the job, but then seeing the, the staff in the workplace environment feel confident and excited to have someone like Zoe on their team. And one thing that I would add to that too is that the type of students that we work with, they've been labeled disabled. Mm -hmm. And so because they have that label, people tend to approach them uh, with the attitude of, how can I help this person? What can I do for this person? And through Amaga Work, they're able to, to sort of move out of that environment of receiving and get to a place where they can now actually contribute to to the workplace, contribute to the community. And that really does a lot for their own personal sense of dignity, uh, because instead of just being on the receiving end of things, uh, they can now use their gifts and they can use their talents and they can bring that into the community and and have it be something that benefits, um, you know, the, the, the workplace that they're in. Let me move on to our final question uh, as we're running out of time. But um, this kind of is similar to the previous question, but what are some of those special things that you see that make this type of work worth it? I know it's hard work and I've seen how hard it is, um, but maybe you can talk about some of those things that you see personally, as well as maybe in participants, but also in some of those businesses that just make going and doing this every day worth it for you? I think for me, I mean, we can both answer this. I think what makes it worth it is just being able to see um, other people uh, have a changed mindset, you know. So, for example, we have volunteers that come every week and they spend time in our social skills club. And in the beginning, they feel nervous. They don't know how to even like talk to somebody that uh, is different and they feel really kind of unsure. But then it's just fun to see over, you know, a few weeks how those relationships become like normal friendships for our, our peer mentors when they come in. They all of a sudden don't even pay attention to the disability, but it just seems like a normal friendship to them. So I think that's what I like seeing that happen in this friendship relationship and then in the workplace too, just that they have just these normal relationships and they don't notice the differences anymore. Yeah. And as a, as a business owner for Simple Coffee, we have uh, part of the training program is that the, the students come down into the coffee shop where they can get some experience. 
And what's really cool about that and, and, and what's worth it for me isn't so much the experience that they get as the students, but the fact that they have an impact on our staff. And our staff, just by interacting with our students, it changes their perception of what disability is. It changes their perception of maybe somebody with autism and Down syndrome that they didn't know how to interact with, but then just by working with them in the coffee shop, now they feel more comfortable. And so that for me is, is, is very much worth it. Okay, actually I have one more question. We always want to end with um, asking the question about if you were to give advice to our listeners, what advice would you give? Sure, yeah, so from a business standpoint, um, when we often think about diversity in the workplace, uh, what comes to our mind most immediately is probably like uh, ethnicity or skin color or gender. You know, the, when we think about a diverse workplace, we think of people from different ethnic backgrounds and, and people from uh, representing different genders, right? Also realizing that diversity has to do with more than just that. It has to do with like people's physical abilities, people's uh, intellectual abilities. And so recognizing that a workplace for it to be truly diverse, it needs to have uh, people that are, that have uh, physical challenges or that have uh, intellectual challenges or developmental challenges, having those people in the workplace helps to create diversity. I think my advice is just to everyone in general, as a, as a mom who has a child with special needs, I think it is so amazing that he can have his own friends and he can have a social life. And so I really encourage you, if you don't have someone like that in your life if you don't know someone with down syndrome or autism or other types of cognitive differences then i would really encourage you to um, go go find a place where you can interact where you can um, meet them and make friends with them and like as mike said not like in a pity way but in a way that your life is going to be so enriched by these relationships and so i just think that that is just a great thing to do As we end this episode, we'd like to thank our guests for joining. It has been a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Our next episode is going to be AI related, featuring a new language model. This podcast would not be possible without the hard work and support of our international student production team. All music and sound effects are courtesy of Pixabay.com, a vibrant community of creatives sharing copyright free images, videos, and music. And we are signing off until next time. We're Students Incorporated because your voice matters.